Good morning, KW Milwaukee, on a beautiful Tuesday, November 29th. Hope everybody had a uh, phenomenal Thanksgiving. And uh, without going too much into it, I just want to say thank you for last week or two weeks ago. So uh, I won't go much more into that because, but I'm incredibly grateful and appreciative of your support and energy. That means the world to me. And so thank you. That's, I won't go much deeper than that. I'll spare everybody. Um, but all right, I want to kick it off this week with two big things. Actually, it's one big thing, but it's wrapped up into two. Okay. And anybody know what this Friday night is? Okay. It's the it's the Keller Williams Milwaukee holiday party. And depending on who you ask, it has a tendency to be the party of the year. And uh, stories that happen or come from that event stay with the event. Okay. So couple things. One, it's Friday night. Two, we have an open bar from six to eight. I just want you to be very, uh, it pays to show up early. Okay. It pays to show up early. Also, I want to make sure that we call out. It's at Birch in Toso, which is also connected to Camp Bar uh, Toso. All of it's totally decked out and ready for the holiday season. We have an incredible lineup of food, beverages, the whole nine yards, uh, DJ, photo booth, uh, the works to make it a really special event to celebrate a phenomenal, phenomenal year. Okay. So we're going to be uh, engaging you this week in some communication and dialogue so that you don't forget. And plus, we also would encourage you to bring spouse, partner, family member, whoever it is that it may be that's important to you or supports you in your life uh, and celebrates you and your accomplishments. They're welcome to come Friday evening. So we hope to see you there. It truly is a fantastic evening. And our goal in selecting the location that we did was something that was centrally located in Milwaukee that was easily accessible for all associates to attend in a way in which that everyone could attend uh, and get home in a safe manner, okay? So please, 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 if you plan to partake in uh, libations, please make sure that you're making smart decisions and that you Uber home, cool? Two thumbs up if you got me. Sweet, yeah. appreciate it. All right. Second thing, and I'm going to go back to our mission, vision, values, beliefs, and perspectives, right? <clears throat> and in our mission statement, it's to build careers worth having, businesses worth owning, lives worth living, experiences worth giving, and legacies worth leaving. And I would say, looking across the 200 plus people on this call, we have had an incredible, incredible, incredibly fortunate run the last couple of years. Many people have done incredibly well. How do I know it? We're on pace to pay out about $70 million in commissions this year. Okay, 70 million in commissions. Now that's on top of a record-breaking year in 2021, on top of a record-breaking year in 2020. A lot of people have done really, really well. And here's what I would do. I would like to challenge you on Friday. Well, this week, but leading up to Friday, okay? And we have a lot of reasons to celebrate, and yet there are a lot of challenges there that uh, our community faces, okay? And in our mission statement, the last two lines are experiences worth giving and legacies worth leaving. And as you think about that, and I know this is going to sound a lot on Giving Tuesday, which if you participate in it, I applaud you. And if you don't, I would consider uh, that you participate because a lot of people have done really, really, really well. Okay. And I would also tell you this, in my role, serving as many locations and as many associates as we do, we get an incredible amount of asks to support different things within the community, an incredible amount of asks. And as much as I would love to support, and we support a ton, um, I think a lot of people can attest to that. We support a ton of different organizations. Uh, we just can't fund everything, right? It's just not feasible to fund everything. However, we can make an impact in a big way. Okay, so this year with this year's holiday party, we are tying it into an ask. Okay, this event is the equivalent of like throwing a small wedding. It's actually not a small wedding. It's a huge wedding. It's, <laughs> it's 500 plus people, food, beverage, drinks, entertainment, the whole thing. And we spend a lot of money on it, 
to reward and to thank everybody for an incredible, incredible year because it's an important piece of creating the culture in the community. And I go back to, we have experiences worth giving and legacies worth leaving, right? So this year, we've partnered up with United Way. And these guys are here to give a quick synopsis as to what the United Way is. And for those of you who don't know, I'm gonna give them a quick intro. I alluded to that we get a ton of asks every single day to make donations to causes that are incredibly important to a lot of people for a variety of reasons. And here's the coolest thing about the United Way. The United Way is one united campaign that supports 200 organizations in Southeastern Wisconsin. Every major corporation in the city runs United Way campaigns because they're stuck in similar situations that we are. You wanna support a million different organizations. There aren't enough funds to go around. How do you do it? You give it to an organization like United Way that supports 200 organizations and gives away about $40 million a year to really incredible organizations, all the way from big ones like Boys and Girls Club of Milwaukee, all the way down to small ones like uh, the rep and different things like that. And not just uh, to steal Nicole or Tony's thunder. Uh, I got involved with United Way probably 10 years ago. Uh, I was on a campaign at Miller Coors and I was on the United Way campaign where uh, for three years, and over a three-year period, every single year, we raised a million dollars for United Way through employees at the Milwaukee Brewery. And it was as little as five bucks donation, 10 bucks a donation, 50 bucks a donation, right? Um, but I wanted to, talking to a lot of different people, we wanted a way to, in which that we could celebrate folks and make an impact on our community. And so here's my ask of you. One, here's the QR code to donate. And I'm gonna put a pledge out there. I think we can get to $15,000, okay? Here's the other thing. I personally will make the first check for the first thousand, okay? I'll write it out of my own personal bank account to do it, okay? Now with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Nicole and Tony to tell you about the United Way and the importance that this organization has in the good works that they do in Southeastern Wisconsin, okay? All right, Nicole and Tony, I'm leaving it over to you. Thank you so much for uh, being here. Thank you so much for letting my friend Tony and I encroach upon your staff meeting. We are very, very grateful. What a um, gift it is also to be here on Giving Tuesday. Um, and you heard your esteemed uh, leader talk about, about giving and the power of giving to United Way. And I'm gonna talk about that today, but the reality is that there isn't a person in this room who doesn't have an organization or a population or a cause that matters to them and you should give accordingly, right? Giving is a very personal thing. Um, Tony, cover your ears. So whether you give to United Way or you give directly to an agency partner, you tie at your faith community, it doesn't matter. The reality is that every single one of us in this room um, has gifts and blessings that many of our community members do not. And there are um, uh, myriad opportunities both today, throughout the week, throughout the year to support that. Now, I happen to think United Way is a pretty good way to do that. Um, you heard Charlie talk about our breadth, and I'm super proud of that. Yes, we do support over 200 organizations. Um, but today, I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about our depth. Okay, Charlie. Okay, I got it. Yeah, so I never know. <laughs> That's what I looked like before COVID. <laughs> so we'll just keep going. I really, Tony, I got to get, get a new head. People are like, who is that? You're much more attractive and younger sister. That's who that is. Okay. We've all been there. We've all been there. <laughs> I need my own personal charity option for that. <laughs> Change does not happen alone. We want to talk to you about what our value proposition is. Yes, again, giving to United Way. I know that dirty U word is out there. Our <laughs> organization uh, that you give to us and that we're taking all this money and the money doesn't go back. The money does go back out. Uh, 90 cents on the dollar, which is far, far above uh, the charity industry standard. And what we know is this, and the word United matters here. And I'm going to say it a lot today. Um, your 100 plus my 100 plus Charlie's 1,000. We got that. Um, is there somebody taking minutes? We've got that recorded. Uh, perfect. Excellent. Um, uh, that together 
is more than just $1,200. That becomes four, that becomes $2,400 when you give it to one of the matching opportunities. These gifts multiply and they matter. And I really do say this with sincerity. The amount is not nearly as important as the intent uh, and the participation rate. So I, 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 love, I love the $15,000 goal. I know that you guys can reach that. I would just also really love for everyone to consider giving and being part of the greater um, process. Our mission, uh, quite simply, is to make sure that everybody in our community, regardless of zip code, regardless of financial background, uh, receives or is able to achieve impact in health education and financial stability. You'll see a snapshot here of our reach. How are my friends? Oh, somebody's not muted in Lake Country. <laughs> I've never said that sentence before. Someone in Lake Country is off mute. Right. <laughs> And I'm, I do I do look forward to hearing what you have to say just after I'm done talking. Um, you'll see a snapshot here. I like that Charlie thought he was going to steal my thunder. I got thunder to spare, Charlie. It's not a problem. Um, because I think sometimes too, what what people think, like who needs, who gets, who at, you know, this is all of us. There isn't a person in this room I can almost guarantee you that isn't isn't either a person who has received a service that's supported by a United Way agency or is related to one. That includes things as maybe basic as swim lessons from the Red Cross, scouting. Charlie sits on the Boys and Girls Club. Certainly, we have we have friends and family uh, who have participated in this. So it's not other people. It's not them or those or others. It's all of us. We fund through a number of different mechanisms. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bore you with that today, but I do want to say this. You'll hear and you, you heard the mention of the of the millions of dollars go out. Many of those dollars go out on July 1st, uh, between 25 and 30 million directly to agency partners and initiatives. But we fund year-round. Um, as as difficult as the COVID time has been, it also gave us an opportunity to flex our emergency fund muscles to make sure that our agency partners were able to operate safely. I don't know how you all transitioned. We work from home most of that time at United Way because we had that option. Homeless shelter staff can't work from home. Right, Many, many of our providers had to still come in every single day, already working with high-risk populations. We were really, really pleased that because of charitable donations from people like you, we were able to move masks and hands in, so much hand sanitizer, hand sanitizer, mask, and other things to keep our, cl our clients and our communities safe. It is, there, as you all know, and we know this as well, there are way more things and agencies or organizations and topics we could fund than we possibly have the capacity for, even a United Way as large as ours. We're really looking for this sweet spot. Do donors care about the issue? Because if I can't fundraise for it and Tony can't fundraise for it, we ain't got no money, so it doesn't matter. Is it an important issue? And I say important because people care about it, but also the data bears out that this is a real issue facing our community. And can United Way do something about it? And when those three things intersect uh, as in the sweet spot in this Venn diagram, that's when we invest. You'll see in our materials, health, education, financial stability, these are not um, unusual or far reaching subjects, right? We want what everybody wants. There's been so much, um, one of the unique things about being here in, in Whitefish Bay in Milwaukee County and talking to Lake Country is we have some very interesting differences in politically between the two biggest counties that we support, Milwaukee and uh, Waukesha. We also support Ozaki and Washington County. And there's so much us and they, right, politically. There was an election recently. I don't know if you heard about it. It was pretty low key. But there's a lot of us and them and a lot of division. And what I would say to you is that there are more, there's more sameness than difference. We all want the same stuff. And if you ask people, they may talk about it differently, but what they want are the same things. They want to have a good job where they can raise a family. They want to have a safe and stable home. You all know all about that. It all starts with the home. They want their kids to go to good schools. We all have these same sort of baseline expectations. What those look like, what they're called, that may vary. But the reality is there's more together and sameness than there is difference. We just don't hear about it quite as much. This year, we've really stepped up uh, around our racial equity objectives. And, and at another time, when we have more time together, or I'll send a video that you can share. We can talk more about the critical importance of facing and addressing inequities in our community. Again, I don't have to tell this group, um, you know, whether that inequity is home ownership, uh, whether it's rental properties, uh, the impacts of redlining, the impacts of historical um, uh, political divide and how it's affected particularly our black and brown families in Milwaukee is real. Um, and I know that you all know that and talk about that because homeownership um, is where all, 
I won't even say home ownership, living in a permanent residence, whether that's ownership or rental, is where all this other stuff starts. You know, try to get a job without an address. Um, one of the things that we've talked about, and I'm gonna, I, I have a, I'm gonna go and talk about safe and stable homes before I outstay my welcome. Is it too late already? All right. Thanks. Is um, everything starts with the home, right? We had one of the things that kicked off our safe and stable homes, and this is a strategy that we're engaged in right now to end family homelessness around, across our four county um, footprint. That's not to reduce family homelessness, that's to end it. One of the things that kicked us off was a beautiful story, um, beautifully written story, not a beautiful story in the journal Sentinel about transient students in Milwaukee public schools, including a student who attended eight schools in one year because her parents kept getting evicted and had to keep moving around. Now, I don't know about you all. I'm the parent of a teenager who's been in the same school district since kindergarten. That's hard enough. These are teachers that know him with classmates that know him. We have a village around him. Just being a parent of a kid period today during COVID, during whatever the heck else is going on is difficult. Imagine being a family and your kids going to a different school every other week. I mean, that just, and then we, and then we say, why can't these kids read better? Why aren't the test scores better? They don't have a home. You have to have that foundation. And so you'll see when you're, when you're considering giving in the coming days and weeks, uh, the safe and stable family homes option. I highlight that here because this is what you all contribute to already just in the work you do by making sure that people have access to homes. Um, in, the, in the past year, these are some of the successes that we've had uh, as a result, uh, including both policy uh, and system change, as well as some individual level thing. And that includes um, increasing uh, access to legal representation, making sure that anyone who's involved in an eviction process has an attorney, uh, even if they can't afford an attorney. That's a big deal. It doesn't mean they shouldn't be evicted. It doesn't mean that the landlord didn't have uh, their rights to exercise. It does mean that when you go into court and one side has an attorney and you don't, things don't go well. So let's make sure at least it's a fair playing field. Um, we've moved millions of dollars of flex fund money. Sometimes people are evicted for as little as back money of $100. And once you're evicted, again, I'm talking to the choir here, that domino effect is real, right? You're out of your home. You don't have the opportunity to rent many other places because landlords have already flagged you as an eviction and on and on and on. So now you're at the, at the hands of a predatory landlord who's jacking up market rate, you know, well above market rates. You're paying twice as much and the cycle never stops. Can we just get some money to folks so that they can stay in their home in the first place and then help them work it out later? And then you'll see here some very specific strategies within Milwaukee public schools to make sure we identify families early who are struggling. God bless teachers who are often the first responders in these situations. They see their kids. They know what's happening with these kids. They may know this before anybody else does. And then the Rental Housing Resource Center, which is a free resource available to all. We do all of those things I talked about um, because of donors like you who give either to safe and stable homes specifically or more broadly to the community fund. The community fund is how we fund over 220 programs, 110 agency partners, uh, region-wide priorities, et cetera, et cetera. So I leave you today by saying, if you have given in the past, thank you. If you are considering a gift in the future, thank you. Um, we are deeply appreciative for Charlie and the team affording us this time today. We have a robust website where you can learn more about our finances. There are impact videos, all the stuff you could wanna learn. Um, and you're in the wonderful hands here of uh, ambassadors and longtime United Way friends who can answer any questions. Thank you so much for spending time with me today. Uh, no, you're good. Nicole, thank you guys. I think, uh... Part of the reason why you heard my voice crack in the beginning was I'm incredibly passionate about our community. And we talk about experiences worth giving and legacies worth leaving. And we come to the end of the year and we start looking at planning, financial allocations. We also, I believe, and I would challenge you, that we have a responsibility to invest in our communities. And the United Way is an incredible way to do that where uh, you can trust an organization that truly, when they say 90 cents on the dollar is far better than industry standards, it's far better than industry standards. I'll tell you, having been involved in a lot of different stuff, um, 90 cents on the dollar going directly to our communities is incredibly impactful. So um, I think you can tell I'm passionate about it. Um, I think our group is passionate about our community in a lot of different ways. So a part of our holiday party this year 
is a partnership with the United Way to help put dollars to use directly to our communities in a way in which that we don't have to pick and choose the 200 requests I get a year. We can have the United Way put it to good use based on their mission, vision, values of pouring into our communities. Is that cool? Awesome. I appreciate it. And I, I do owe a shout out and a thank you to Ginger Lazovic, uh, who came up with the idea, presented the idea, connected us with Nicole, and kind of got this ball rolling. So, Ginger, thank you. All right. Now, getting back to business. Um, Tony and Nicole, thank you guys. Appreciate it. So be on the lookout. We'll, uh, the QR code will pretty much be on everything. And we're just doing this a one week campaign. You're not gonna hear about this for a month or try and drive you to do it. If, if the movement moves you, great. I encourage you to do so. And if it doesn't, cause you have other organizations, that's totally cool too. I'm just trying to create inertia to give back to our community. Yeah. Yep. Beautiful. Ginger just said, uh, very easy process to donate and more information will be coming out post team meeting as it relates to how to do it in a quick and efficient manner. All right. So two weeks ago, we talked about perspective heading into Thanksgiving. Okay. And we talked about how perspective is important to maintain. And I shared this considering the last 90 days, and hopefully some of this wasn't lost amongst everything else that was going on that day. But I said, consider this in the last 90 days. There were 7,306 new listings that came to the market in the last 90 days. There were 5,632 units that went under contract. Now, if you're keeping tabs at home, that's an 80% conversion of listings that came to the market that went under contract within the first 90 days. So sellers that are worried about selling shouldn't be worried about finding the right buyer for their home at the right price. There's an 80% conversion there. And lastly, within the last 90 days, there were 6,570 units that went under that closed. Okay. Now, I share with you that because I want to share with you for some perspective from your peers, okay? Peers that are along, working alongside you every single day that are doing this at a really high level. And I want to gain their perspective. And I asked them two questions in advance to share with the group. And so Marcus, I'm going to lead with you. Then we'll jump to Sarah, Elena, and Sarah Joe. And the reason why I chose these four people is this. Their businesses are far outpacing market averages and they're doing it with incredible scale. These aren't people that are up like, oh, they went from 2 million to 4 million. Congrats, you're up 100%. These are people that went from like 10 million to 20 million. They're up 100%. They're, these are people that went from, uh, have scaled really, really big businesses despite industry headwinds. And I wanted them to share their perspective on things they learned in 2022 and what they're looking ahead for in 2023. So with that, I'm going to flip it over to Marcus Auerbach. Marcus, you're up first. Give us a little bit of perspective as it relates to, um, as you close out 2022, what's your key takeaway from the year and what you're looking ahead for 23? Yeah, we, we've we've learned a lot. You always do. But I think if, if I have to bring it down to one thing, then 2022 has really shown us how incredibly um, the market is driven by short term news. You know, everybody is looking what's going on. We've seen it in spring with, uh, you know, hysterical real estate market that was just crazy hot. And we have seen rates going up and the whole thing started swinging the other side. And to me, the big thing is that we really have to educate our clients on the big picture. They're trying to make a 10-year, 20-year, 30-year decision. They're, they're looking at making, you know, this is really an important step in their life. And they're being influenced very much by what they've read in the news yesterday. So I think it's very important to remind people on the big picture why they're doing this. Uh, at the time frame they're doing this for, I usually default to a 10-year to a window and tell them, look, this is what's going on in the economy right now. This is what, what interest rates are right now, but you're really doing this for, for the next 10 years. So let's take a look at the big picture and what that means for you. And Marcus, taking it back to you personally, 
Uh, where's your mindset as you head to 23, as you look at your kind of your business planning, your goal setting and those sorts of things, how do you and your team plan to attack 23 and kind of where's your mindset at from that standpoint? Yeah, the, this is the time of the year to to sharpen your ax. So, you know, younger agents might be worried because the market is slower. It happens like this every year, but that's predictable. It's like winter, spring market will be coming. So we have a little downtime now, a little extra time on our hands, and we used it to sharpen our ax. And the two things that we mainly focus on is, number one, more leverage, using more technology, using more of the tools in command. That's one part of it, but we also want to be more personal and want to have more personal connections and interactions with our clients. So it, it's kind of a two-pronged approach, leverage on one side, personal contact, more personal contact on the other side. Marcus, appreciate you, brother. Thank you for sharing your insights. All right, Reardon, for someone whose business is up 133%, uh, what did you learn in 2022, just to start off? <laughs> 133%. All right. Um, 2022 has been the year that Tim and I really focused on treating the business like a business. It's really been getting the fundamentals in line, getting all of our perspective um, on the relationships with our clients, and really trying to build valuable relationships that last long term. Um, really focusing everything a little more systematically, but I've always ran the business very relationship-based, so really trying to balance it out with focusing on our client events and focusing on our client touches and really just ensuring that um, our clients understand that we are the full package resource when it comes to all things real estate. And how about as you guys look ahead to 23, right? Um Tim jumped into it full time with you in 2022 and the market's different than when it was when you guys went all in, put all your chips on the table yeah. to do this together. Where's your guys' mindset as you look ahead in business planning for 23? Uh, what excites you to get up every single day? Kind of we're looking ahead. What does the future hold for you guys? Yeah, 2023. Um, right now, echoing what Marcus said, we are also in that kind of slower time, pay, time frame right now. Um, December is always about really just slowing down and enjoying the downtime, enjoying family, enjoying friends, having longer lunches, and just really building those relationships and talking about the value in real estate. We've been having a lot more conversations about the stability of the market. Although interest rates are up, we're still seeing very stable prices and market values, and everybody seems to want to chatter about that. So really talking about the value in investing. We've had a lot more friends want to talk about the value in short-term rentals, the value in, you know, purchasing a duplex for passive income or flipping properties. So we've really focused a little bit more on the long-term real estate game, which hasn't always been a conversation with a lot of our first-time home buyers previously. Cool. Reardon, thank you. Welcome. Onward, my friend. All right, Zeman, you're next. 2022, what was your key takeaway? You know, you've had a lot of transition move from, uh, you know, the Tosa area out to Lake Country, uh, done a different things. Your average price points have been way up. Uh, what was your kind of key takeaways from 2022 so far this year? Um, I really focused on expansion in every single way last year. That was my biggest goal. So I wanted to be outside of the Wauwatosa market, which I've done a great job you know, doing in Lake Country. I also wanted to make sure that I was expanding myself into different aspects um, as far as new construction. I work a lot with a great builder, but that's been fantastic for me. And overall, just gratitude. Um, my admin, I have a great admin, which has allowed me more time to put back to my clients, which is everything. Um, gratitude for my clients with client appreciation, um, handwritten notes, just taking a moment, or if I have downtime, I will text somebody or ask them about, you know, a project that they've done on their house. I just want to be forefront and I want to be in many different aspects of real estate as far as investing, building, selling, land, everything. The yeah, diversification has kind of been your key theme for 2022. Absolutely. Cool. 23, what are you looking ahead for? Where's your mindset at as you look? you know, down the barrel of, all right, we're heading, the, the calendar is about to flip over. Where are you thinking for 23? 
I don't think for 23, I always say that I don't focus on the year. I focus on the career. So my goals for 2023 is pretty much um, a balance and to give as much time and money back into my clients and my career. I don't think money is, is doing a lot right now. Great sitting in a bank account. So if I can invest it in real estate or if I can invest it back into my business, I think it's going to be a great year for that. Um, I'm not too worried about things slowing down. Like even right now, the slow time, it's been nice to sit back and reflect, but I'm, I'm doing a CMA every single day and emailing it out to either former clients or people who might want to sell. And that's been my little kind of winter activity because I want more listings next year. Cool. Zeman, appreciate it. Love it. Thank you for sharing your perspective. All right. Last one, Sarah Jo Dietrich. Come on, sister. Tell us about 2022. You've had a great success. What are you, what was your big kind of takeaway or learning from this year? Yeah. Um, my biggest thing was slowing down with communication. I mean, this was an exciting year for me and I tend to get really hyped and I talk fast and I do everything fast. And I really had to focus on putting my clients back in the driver's seat and going back to the basics of education, which Marcus talked on and um, relationships. So back to those basics of, am I doing the proper buyer consultation I need to do? So when the message comes, they understand what I'm saying. Am I doing a proper seller consultation? And really, because I want to always move quickly and fast, I found that the texting was not effective. You know, I always want to be so quick, but picking up the phone did so much better for me. So that's something I'm constantly working on is having really meaningful conversations and not being a quick problem solver, but being a collaborator. So I think that led to, to the success I saw in 2022. Well, and I'll tell you, I'll give you guys a little bit of a side st sidebar story. Uh, Sarah Joe and I did the pizza call night together in October. And Sarah was all nervous and kind of jittery at first. And to her point, like she, I know Sarah Joe really well, moves really fast, likes things to be quick. And she sat down and had incredibly meaningful conversations with folks for an hour while we ate pizza together and we did it together. Right. Yeah. And I think you left there with like three listing appointments yeah, of people good. that you were just like, oh man, that was a person like I could have easily texted, but then the meaningful connection would have been lost. And I loved being able to experience that with you in the moment. Yeah, that's good stuff. All right. So 23. Yeah. Uh, what are you looking forward to? Uh, you know, another person who has a spouse in the business as well, kind of all the chips are on the table. Um, a lot of things that can be in people's razes as it relates to, oh, what's going on in the market. And I will say this about Sarah Joe, if you haven't had the pleasure of connecting with her, one of the most incredi incredibly positive people in their outlook in life. So Sarah Joe, where's your outlook for 23? Oh gosh, how do I follow that? Thank you. Um, so, you know, going through the bold program, I mean, I really dissected, okay, here's what I want to hit. Here's how many families I want to help. Here are my numbers. But then I looked a little bit further. So what do I have to do in order to hit my goals? And then I'm looking at my lead gen and my sources. But then I even went a little bit deeper and I changed my why that I've had my same why for a long time. But this year, um, recently, I just changed my why. And that is may all my interactions with others be meaningful for them. So anything I do outside of real estate, I want all my interactions to mean something for someone else. So that's really looking at my co-broke relationships, my relationships with families. Um, you know, I'm in line at Gloriosos. And, you know, when you talk to somebody, you, how can my interaction with them be meaningful for them and put the focus on others and watch it come back? Beautiful. May all my interactions be meaningful for them. Write it down. SJD, thank you. Appreciate it. Guys, Marcus, Sarah, Elena, Sarah, Joe, guys, I appreciate your perspective. I think it's important. Diversity of thought and diversity of approach is incredibly powerful. Uh, and we wanted to bring that to you this morning as a follow-up to perspective and the perspective that some of your peers had who have had really, really successful years this year and where they plan to go this, not only this year, but in future years as well. Because as Elena alluded to, you're not in it for a great year. You're in it for a great career. Awesome. Guys, thank you for jumping in. All right, Sheriff, get ready. I'm flipping it over to you. Sheriff Reed, we have some actually, hold on. I may be wrong on that. I may have Lindsay next. My apologies. Uh, Lindsay Vranick, you're up next. Vranick. All right. Can you hear me? Yep, you're good. 
Great. So I just wanted to take a few minutes to go through the Key Please app. And so if you guys have not heard of this app, I would highly suggest that you download it. It's a great piece of leverage and we talk about leverage all the time. So we're talking about it again, again today. Um, and so as we head into the holidays, um, I know a lot of us have talked about spending more time with our families, spending more time doing client events and things like that. So um, Key Please is really to help you if you need showing assistance, if you need someone to cover an open house on a weekend, runner activities, letting in a contractor in a home, um, if you need someone sitting in a home during an inspection, um, this is the opportunity to download the Key Please app and to um, see what available agents are, are free to cover these showings for you and other activities. Um, and so the Key Please app, you just simply download it. Um, and then all of the information for downloading, um, the brokerage license number and your KW email is essentially what you need in order to download and um, create an account in there. So you will find those brokerage license numbers on the KW Realty NKE website. We have an entire tab dedicated to the showing assistance and key please app. So you'll see that in there um, on the homepage. Guys, this um, may sound real quick. This may sound redundant. And you know why we bring it up so often? Because on a Saturday morning when I'm trying to go get donuts at Sendix and I get a phone call from an agent because they need help with a showing in Racine. And I say, have you downloaded Key Please yet? And they say, no. I say, great. I'll send you the bill for my kids' donuts. Download Key Please and get some help and support. Now, that may sound really callous, but at the same time, there's 400 people on this app that are only KW agents that are willing to help you, that are willing to raise their hand. Also, one other thing. Uh, last week or this week, Lindsay, you can confirm, or maybe next week, uh, we're also adding 189 agents from the Southwest office to this app. So now you'll have access to over 700 KW associates across all of Southeastern Wisconsin that are willing to help you if you simply put the request in through Key Please. Now, you can always call me on Saturday morning. Just know that I'll be visiting David at Sendix getting donuts, and I'm happy to help. But I got a little excited there because I get those phone calls all the time. And I'm like, oh my gosh, people, come on, help me help you. All right. <laughs> I apologize. Oh, you're good. Okay. So just in 2022, across the three KW um, Milwaukee market centers, and thanks for mentioning that, Charlie. Yes, we are adding the Southwest office in here too. So there's going to be more and more um, agents and opportunities utilizing this. Um, but just in 2022, we've had 219 agents register on the Key Please app, and we've had 171 opportunities that have been requested. So whether it's showings or open house coverage, um, and between all of those opportunities, the average cost is $40. And so the great thing about the app is that you choose your price. Hey, I need a showing covered. Um, I'm going to pay you 40 bucks. Um, and all of that um, transaction piece of it takes place through the actual app. Um, so you don't have to go through and Venmo somebody like everything takes place within that key please app. Um, and so the more agents who download this and the more agents who utilize it and send out those opportunities, those showing requests, that open house coverage, um, the more opportunity that everyone across KW Milwaukee is going to have with this app. So whether you're um, a super busy agent who needs help with those showings, um, or if you're brand new to real estate and you just need some experience out in the field doing showings or holding an open house, or even just sitting in at a home during an inspection, it's a great opportunity to learn through each of those experiences. Um, the other feature with this app is that you can um, set your personal team up. And so essentially you just favor agents. So if you, um, you know, send out a showing request and um, an agent covers that and they did a really great job, you can favor them as um, one of your favorite agents so that any other future showings, you can send those to them as well. Um, I think that's it for, yep. So that's it for key plays. So you guys, if you have questions on that, or if you just need help downloading it, reach out to me. Um, their support is awesome. They, um, if you have any issues logging in, basically what we do is we send in our rosters twice a month. Um, so if for whatever reason you're unable to log in, um, shoot me an email. I will get you into the app so that you can start utilizing it ASAP.
Uh, so switching gears, um, you may have seen me post on our Facebook group about new quarter four 12 direct postcards. Um, so there is new content up and available um, specifically for this time of year and for winter. Um, so there's a winterize your home postcard, a Christmas tree farm and holiday lights postcard. So the Christmas tree farms and the holiday lights the point of this campaign is to really provide some Milwaukee local content to share with your contacts. So not only is it a direct mail postcard that you can send out in command, you can also take these images and you can post them to social media and you can also send them out via email. So each of these is set up as a smart plan within command that you can easily choose from the library and send it out via email. Uh, so if you're interested in this, um, all of the information and to request this is on our KW Realty MKE website. So again, it's under the KW Marketing Concierge, and you'll see the 12 direct postcard campaign. So if you haven't utilized this before, feel free to go in here and submit a request to receive these. Um, it'll just ask you some of your contact information in order for us to personalize these, um, these postcards for you. Um, and then the other thing is that 12, um, I'm sorry, the smart plans. So next slide, Charlie. So we have an entire smart plan library dedicated to KW Milwaukee. And so if you're looking for this Milwaukee specific um, content, um, if you go into your smart plans, go into the library tab mm -hmm. and you just search KW Milwaukee, you are going to find everything. So whether it's uh, the brewer schedule, the buck schedule, um, the holiday lights, the Christmas tree farms, winterize your home. Um, and we've done many, many previous um, to, the, to these. Um, you will find everything in this smart plan library. And again, these are just one-off emails that you can send to your database in command. So if you're looking at connecting with your database the month of December, um, these are available. They're ready for you to send out at your convenience. Uh, and I think the next slide is just an example of what that email looks like. Um, so I promise my information is not going to show up at the bottom. It's going to show your information from your marketing profile and command. Uh, but that is what one of those emails is going to look like. You can also personalize the text. So if you don't like the kind of boilerplate text that I have in there, feel free to go in and add it. Otherwise, you can send it out whenever you choose. But that's all I have. Thank you. Guys, I don't think this group appreciates how freaking good Lindsey Vranick is. <laughs> Seriously, I don't think people realize she is so talented and everything she does comes from feedback that you give her. She listens and she creates action. And I would implore you to, all, to not only thank her, but utilize her because Marcus talked about it, Sarah talked about it, Elena talked about it. They talked about leverage and creating opportunities for things to happen and work behind the scenes. And it's all the stuff that Sarah, or sorry, not Sarah, all the stuff that Lindsay does for you in the background. She is uber talented. It's all free. And it's all free. Awesome. free and she responds so quickly. She, really she is. done so well. It's incredible. Lindsay Vranick, if if you have a whole fan club here that I hope you know appreciates everything you do. Love you guys. Thanks, Peter. All right. Now I flip it over to Sheriff Reed. Sheriff Reed, what's the latest and greatest that we've seen pop up or come across your desk? Well, good morning, everybody. This is just a short uh, compliance reminder. And Steph and I like to do reminders when we continue to get phone calls or questions about uh, certain areas. So today I'm gonna to repeat about post-closing problems and what is your role as an agent to do. There are two different types of post-closing disputes, issues, problems that come up. And one category is the issues between the buyer and the seller. It's usually a seller liability of non-disclosure. Buyer moves in, stuff happens in the house, and they want the buyers want to go after the sellers for not disclosing that. That's the most common. The other type is the issues between the broker agent and us uh, as an agent or a firm and the consumer. The consumer is not happy about something that happened after closing and comes back to the agent um, or directly to me. I get the phone call 
but it comes back to us after closing. And those are usually situations of misrepresentation, uh, the agent or the firm, including concealment or failure to disclose. And they certainly aren't very common, but when they do happen, we do have a role in that those situations. So to go forward, talking about the issues between buyer and seller, um, these, as I said, are usually about non-disclosure. If the seller did not disclose something, the, sell, the new buyer is talking to the neighbor and they said, oh, they had Bergen over there all the time. It was always a big problem. Um, and then the buyer, the new buyer says, I never heard this. It was never disclosed to me. And as I said, the burden of proof is with the buyer to prove that the seller knew about these defects but did not mention them. Um, but it is something that if we cannot get the buyer and the seller to talk and resolve it between themselves, all we can do is suggest that they get legal advice. Um, our compassion, our help is so evident throughout the whole transaction, getting these relationships with our clients, lo loving and learning, living with their families practically. But then we get to closing and this is a time when you, the agent, have to step back. We want to help. We've been helping all along. But after closing, we really have to step back. It puts us in a liability and it puts Keller Williams into a liability position. So straight from the WRA, the agent has no responsibility to assist the buyers or give the buyers advice. The calls I usually get are, oh, what do I do now? My buyer is so upset. They found this problem in the house when they moved and I've already connected them with a contractor. You know, I'm getting the reports, everything over to them. And I go, yes, yeah, stop. <laughs> this, this is this situation. You really have to step back. And really the only advice you give them is to talk to a lawyer or resolve it with the other party. Yeah, um, I, I will say anecdotally, here's the cause of caution for you. And we just have this happened maybe a week or so, Joan. Right. A buyer's agent was incredibly helpful to their buyer mm -hmm. in a situation that came up. And in doing so, they created a liability for themselves that they now got included in the lawsuit because they were trying to be helpful. Right. And while I understand we have to we are want to be compassionate and empathetic for our clients and help them and serve them because we want them to be clients for a lifetime. You do also have to understand sometimes that when you share information, you're exposing yourself as well through this transaction. And so that's why if someone requests something from you post-closing and you don't know what to do, pick up the phone and call Sheriff Reed or call Steph. Sound good? All right. Um, so this does talk about the potential liability of unauthorized practice of law. That's what you're doing. Even to tell them, the burden of proof is on the buyer to prove that you didn't disclose. That's actually a legal advice. So we refrain from even saying that. So the party should be encouraged to work together or go to um, legal counsel. So the next slide is post-closing between the consumer and the broker. This is the other type that we see not as often, but usually um, I get forwarded the phone call from an irate buyer or an irate seller after closing and they're complaining about something that their agent or the other agent uh, with Keller Williams did or did not do. And um, these are situations where, again, I'm not a lawyer, we're not a lawyer. When these problems arise, it's best to um, look at the situation, uh, get the information, but then bring lawyers in. So a lot of examples of this are the broker stated incorrectly that something was in good condition, you know, newer roof. Um, and then they find out it, well, you know, it was newer in 1984. Or inaccurate statements appear to the buyer that they've been made um, by the broker's knowledge. This is very important. MLS has finally uh, helped this situation but they demand that you put what the source is that you got this information from. But in your advertising and flyers and things like that, if you talk about um, situations, conditions, 
and it sounds like it's coming from you, the agent, uh, the buyer could take you as a professional and say, well, she said that this was okay. Um, but the real situation is you always have to identify the source. Uh, this came from the seller. This came from the municipality. This came from whatever. So um, as I said, MLS now makes you mark that, but make sure that you mark that in your advertising as well. And the last slide. Oh, no. Next to the last slide. Um, this is a this is a misconception, and I've been um, involved in a situation like this. We have those disclaimers on the MLS sheets and things, you know, that things may not be accurate. Uh, those, when they get to court, usually don't hold up. They're they're not really an absolute protection. So don't rely just on the fact that oh well, it says this may not be accurate. Um, if a buyer is made aware of defects or conditions, they must disclose. And this is a problem where it can come back and bite Keller Williams and bite you as the agent because you didn't disclose material adverse facts when the seller did not. Um, if an agent who's a buyer's agent or a listing agent receives a letter uh, from any communication from an attorney, this is your role. Your role in these disputes is to um, send that letter or that email to me or to staff right away. Please don't take any action when you get a, any kind of a communication from an attorney. And then the last point, which is the next slide. Um, we just had a situation like this, and it was a co-broke, um, sort of a bossy co-broke, after closing was saying, you never sent in the loan commitment, you know, it's closed. You never send in the loan commitment. We need a copy of it, or I need a copy of that for my files or whatever. Um, and was very demanding about the whole thing. Even called me about it, that these documents were to be sent over immediately. Once the property has closed, that's good enough evidence that um, they got the loan. <laughs> so a loan <laughs> commitment is not required. Actually, no requirement that documents need to be created post-closing. You don't have to draft up an amendment that you forgot to do and send it over. Uh, closing satisfied everything. So that's another little reminder. But that's there it. There you go. It, people laugh, but this is the stuff we deal with every day. <laughs> Sheriff Reed, Lieutenant Kennard, thank you guys. We appreciate all your support. I know it's it seems mundane and uh, repetitive, but again, we bring forth the things that we deal with on a weekly basis and we say, great, another example that we can bring to the group. Uh, so lean on this group. I will also tell you this, it may sound a little frightening. Uh, I'll just reassure you, we have absolutely phenomenal legal representation on retainer that it helps us get out of a lot of disputes before you even have to get into a lawsuit. And the sooner that our legal representation is aware of any sort of sticky situation, the easier it is for us to get out of it and pivot to get go right. So Joni, Steph, thank you guys for all your support. All right. Deadlines spur action. Deadlines spur action. Here's what I know. We have a deadline coming up. I did mine. What's everybody's deadline? C-E-G-M-A-R-D-S-P-S. -E okay. Here's also what I know. Only 62% of people in the North Shore, 75% of people in Lake Country, and 75% in Innovation have paid their GMAR dues. 22% in North Shore have, have completed their continuing ed, 38% in Lake Country, 33% in Innovation. DSPS online renewals, 17% North Shore, 30% Lake Country, 28% Innovation. Now, we've only been talking about this since March, okay? And in the household that I grew up in, we had a phrase, D's don't drive, okay? Last time I checked, anything below an 80% was basically a D. So I wanna protect you and your abilities to earn your incomes. December 14th is less than two weeks away, okay? Make sure that we get this stuff done. You have an obligation in order for you to be able to continue your real estate license and when the MLS gets shut off for you on December 15th, I don't have a lot of sympathy for you, okay? Yes, Stillman, yes. 
uh, as one who has procrastinated in the past, I have done it this year. The 14th is too late because it takes time because on the 14th, everybody is taxing that system. And what Stillman is saying is he has been the one who has procrastinated to the 11th hour. And at the 11th hour, everybody's taxing the system. And there's no guarantees that if you finish it on the 14th, you will have your license renewed on the 14th. So don't take the chance. Deadline spur action. Reminder, send your receipts by December 14th to Steph so that we can track it and make sure that you're all good. Sound good? Beautiful. Love you. Last two things and we'll wrap it up a little bit longer of a meeting and I apologize. Finance and operations. Everybody wants their 1099, right? If you moved in 2022, we need to know about it so that we know that we can send it to the proper address. So if you moved in 2022, please, please, please make sure you update Jen and Emily with your current address. Finally, as Marcus talked about, Sarah Joe talked about, Elena and Sarah talked about earlier, it's time to sharpen your ax. And there's another thing I wrote down as it relates to the perspective that your peers shared with you. Here's what I found before I go into talking about sharpening your ax. The top folks are finding peace in the pace to stay grounded. Okay, the four people we heard from today, my takeaway from them, they are finding peace in the pace of the current market of the moment. They are finding peace in the pace to stay grounded, to sharpen their axe. So opportunities for you to sharpen your axe. Business planning clinic today in Lake Country with Deej at 1130. You don't know where to go or what to do with the numbers that you had. Make sure you're attending a business planning clinic. Later this week, North Shore on Thursday, on December 1st, and Friday in Innovation, Maureen's going to lead it. Here's why this is important. And I'm going to use a real life example of when we taught this class last year for the last couple of years. Every single time Maureen teaches this class, someone goes down, okay? They do all their numbers and they never realized how much they discounted their commission until they did the business planning clinic. And then what we did is we go back and say, man, what happened if you saved the half a percentage point on the discounting that you did? And what did that end up costing you? And for someone in one year, I'm not going to name a name, for one year, we, we did the math, that half a percentage of the discounting that they were doing cost them $72,000 in income. And mind you, this was someone with two kids in college at the time. They were sick. So it was a great learning lesson because now every time I see that person, they come back to me and they say, I've learned how to defend my commission. I'm earning what I believe my value is to be. And I'm comfortable with those that don't see my value. I'm okay from walking away from the business. And they find peace in that. Business Planning Clinic is in a great way for you to do it. Today in Lake Country, Thursday and Friday in North Shore and Innovation. Also be on the lookout because this is a big thing for Maureen. If you don't have a vision for where your life is headed, it's impossible for you to plan your business. She'll be doing uh, vision boards in advance of these discussions at 10 a.m. beforehand. So business planning clinic today in Lake Country, Thursday, Friday in North Shore and Innovation. Sound good? Beautiful. Wrapping it up, December training calendar. We'll send it out. Take a look. Save the date. Ignite is coming back. We're doing it across all four locations, in New Berlin included, Innovation, North Shore, Lake Country. And we're going to have a diversity of people and teachers. And we're going to be hosting it in New Berlin from January to February. Be on the lookout for registration. And oh, by the way, you don't have to be new to attend. The reason why those that are experienced attend is because they're looking for the diversity of thought and diversity of approach from those who teach it across a wide geography. Lastly, I look forward to seeing everybody on Friday night. I would love to see you and meet your spouse, your partner, whoever it is that may be your biggest raving fan that you want to bring. I hope to see you there. And I would encourage you to think about the experience worth leaving or the legacy worth leaving. And I would implore you to consider a donation to the United Way, because here's what I know. At 40 bucks a person, we'll reach our goal. I just tried to kickstart it with my personal donation because I am so freaking incredibly passionate about our community and we deserve from everything that has been given to us to give back to our community to make it better than we found it. Cool? I look forward to seeing everybody Friday night. Guys, have a great week. Thanks for showing up.
All right, I'm going to flip over to new listings here.